man of the hour, the man with the power, the man too sweet to be sour, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, your current reigning and defending revolutionary wrestling podcast prediction champion, Tony G. Welcome to the revolutionary wrestling podcast WrestleMania prediction video. You are seeing us for the first time seeing my glorious, beautiful face, and also Tony G, who has been victorious as of late. That's the brand new and we're strap gonna I'm sporting on my shoulder. Break down our predictions for WrestleMania in New Orleans. Yeah, I uh, first off, I gotta say, this is for the first time in probably a decade, top to bottom, best WrestleMania they've got card-wise. This a is a good time. one. This is a good one. This one could even pos. I'm gonna go go out on a limb here. This one could possibly challenge 17's greatness. Oh. I know, I know. Wait till you see the actual wrestling. It's definitely going to be better than the other WrestleMania that was really busy 2000. I would say in terms of sheer wrestling quality, yes, it probably will be better than WrestleMania 17. But as far as master craftsmanship is how you put a show together, it's not quite there. Give me your hate in the comments. Give it to me. Wash me in your judgment. I'll take it. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, let's start out with Owens. Well, Zane, let's start with the pre-show since that's well. Who knows what's going to be on the pre-show? Oh, it's already decided. Oh, the pre-show. Unfortunately for every like all forty people involved, both battle royals Ouch. and the cruiserweight title are on the. All right, show. Well, let's uh, cruiserweight title. Man, I just don't know enough about either guy. I don't watch two hundred five live. You know what I've seen what? from Ali and. I've liked uh, and Cedric Alexander. He's he's pretty impressive. I've, I've seen several of his matches, but I don't follow them. I don't watch 205 Live. I don't know enough about it. I didn't watch any of the tournament. So I'm going out on a complete limb going with Ali to win the Cruiserweight title. I've watched a little bit. Like I'll admit, I'm that much of a mark. I've actually watched a little bit of some 205 Live and a lot of the Purple Rope stuff when it's on Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> Um, from what I've seen, wow. I think they're going to put on Ali. Yeah, I know, I know. You can... Really again, going out on a limb there. Again, really, wa again, wash me in your judgment. Someone who actually watches a little bit of 205 Live. But all right. <laughs> so, the Battle Royals. For uh, uh, the Mildred Burke Memorial the China Battle Royals. Memorial Battle You mean Royal. Mildred Burke no, you Memorial? you mean China. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've Literally. had a bit of a disagreement as to who this Battle Royal should really commemorate. I am going hard for Mildred Burke. You're hard for Mildred Burke? <sighs> She's a good shooter from back in the day. Can't help it. Fair enough. <laughs> I think it should be China because obviously you have the Andre the, ba Andre the Giant Battle Memorial. The so. eighth wonder of the world. And then China was always the ninth wonder of the world, so there's got to be some continuity there. I, it I'll only give, makes sense. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. There's... Some good reasons that's not going to happen, and we won't get into all of that. It's because she I, did porn. Yeah, there we go. I was going to, you know... Same reason she's not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, I mean, pretty much. Hey, you know what the best part about the Women's Battle Royal is? We haven't even talked about the match. We just argued over what it should be called. Oh, and let's... Welcome to wrestling, folks. All right, And let's so, touch on base real quick. Who do you got? Why is it an ovary? Why, why, why? Oh, the, 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 the trophy. <laughs> yeah, why, the trophy. why? It's, uh, it, they, they could have, it was unfortunately shaped. I will say that. So um, how did that go under the radar? Yeah. So, <laughs> moving right along to the match itself, finally. Yes. Uh, who do you got? I, I wanted to pick Becky Lynch because I think she needs a little bump. And I think that she deserves it, and I think they need to do something with some of the women on SmackDown Live. But I think we see this as what it really is. It's a vehicle for Sasha and Bailey to continue their feud. Sasha Banks wins. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Sasha wins. Uh, Bailey, uh, we love you, Bailey. Something fizzled out right before WrestleMania last year, and yep. it just hasn't 
picked up again. She wasn't ready and last year. This is Sasha's time to really come into her own. I've been impressed with her ever since that triple threat match she had with uh, Charlotte and, and Becky, Becky yeah. and WrestleMania a couple of years ago. Yeah, that that I've been was impressed sadly one since. of the best matches on that entire card. There yes, probably, prob probably yeah, one of the best matches on the whole card. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next battle royal. <sighs> this one's hard. My uh, favorite to win it was Ty Dillinger. Phil tells me that he's injured. I've heard he's injured, but, you know, hey, could it be KFAB? They usually use the Andre Battle Royal as a catalyst to try to push a young star, and there's not one on the roster that the fans are more behind than Ty Dillinger, and they haven't done jack squat with him. There is one person that the fans are more behind at the moment that will be in the Battle Royal, and he is a person who is quite... <laughs> Woken, and that's my prediction. It will be Woken Matt Hardy. He's actually hot right now. It actually makes some sense, um, and it would just be another weird prop in his odd little Hollywood universe. I don't yeah, know since play. Dillinger's so I injured, I I would have to agree oh, because okay. uh, well, let's face it, Matt Hardy with the trophy, those segments, vignettes, that writes itself. That's just right. comedy gold. So now we got the uh, Although I will say, if Bray Wyatt shows up in a new Woken Bray Wyatt gimmick... That'll be after Mania. I don't think he'll be in the match, but if he were in the match, I could see that, but I gotta, I'll got i stick with Matt. Okay. All right. Now, to the main show. Uh, let's just start at the bottom of the card and work our way on up here. Yep. You got on the bottom of this ticket, Owens and Zayn versus Shane Bryan. I could see that opening the card. I could... Well, with, with Daniel with Bryan, Bryan and, uh, no, it'll be close to the end. If we're going to start with that one, I, I've i got to say the obvious choice is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to win so they can get back on SmackDown, right? No. You know what? I don't think it matters. The, what, Shane was supposed to get control of company if he beat The Undertaker. We all knew that wasn't going to happen at that mania. He got, you know, he got creative control anyway. It's just as easy to write them back onto the TV as it is here. So, you can't have Daniel Bryan make his in-ring return and lose. It, no, it's not happening. Daniel Bryan picks up the win for their team. Oh, I, I'm with you. I wrote specifically here, Bryan by a Kevin Owens and Zayn carrying everybody to a four-star <laughs> classic. Because Shane yeah. is apparently a little under the weather. One, like to, to what degree, who knows? Yeah. Um, Brian is just making his return back, so there's going to be at least a little fritter of rust. So Owens and Zane are really being counted on to carry this match. Yep. So, but I think Brian's going to ultimately get the one, two, three. I am, I am slightly disappointed. Okay, that it's not a singles match for Zane and Owens. Though. The SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Moving right along because this is a big card. <laughs> All right, SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Who do you got? Well, you've got the champion Usos. Going against their rival New Day and against up and coming Bludgeon Brothers. And we're still trying to pretend the fact hey, that this is still a new tag team, the Bludgeon Brothers, even though Harper and Rowan have been tagging yeah. together for years. Yeah, at least, I digress. At least since 15, before 2015. Uh, yeah, we're at uh, yeah, 30. But, but hey, hey, they, they got some chemistry. They do. I have the Bludgeon Brothers winning this. I think they're going to put the belts on them because they don't ever hold back putting the belts on anybody anymore. True. So I, I originally had them winning the titles here, but I think they were introduced into this feud a little late, and I think Usos are going to retain. I don't think it'll be much longer than the next pay-per-view before they get the titles on the Bludgeon Brothers, but I got Usos to retain. You know, the Usos do deserve it. They've just yeah. never made it to the main show. I like the Usos. They finally really made it. Up, like, their Hell in a Cell match with the New Day was some of the finest tag team wrestling yeah. I've seen in Years, fantastic. But ultimately, I think they're going to try and push this, you know, new to new to us, anyways. Bludgeon Brothers, right. and I think they're going to put the belts on them. That's, so, all right. I, I so we got a little bit of a difference there. All right. Finally, moving on, the mixed tag match between <sighs> Triple H and Stephanie versus Kurt and Ronda. Let me already just save everybody the time here. Ronda via armbar. There you go. That's how the match is going to end. Ronda Rousey gets an armbar. If it's any other way, oh dear God. You know, and this, the thing about this match, it's going to be the worst match on the entire card. 
And well, you might not want to admit no, that, but it will no, be. No, 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 it will not be. Not with Triple H and Kurt Angle in there. It, yeah. You want to bet? Uh, bet it is, because, let's face it, there hasn't been a segment on Raw that Kurt's been involved in over this feud that he hasn't flubbed half of his lines. Both the matches he's been in with the Shield wrestler. and with the Survivor Series team, it hasn't looked great. It's been a little rough. And going back to Ronda, she's about as good in the ring so far as she is on the mic. Ouch. So here's the thing. It's hard for me not to cheer for Triple H and Stephanie right now because Triple H has devoted most of his life to the company. Stephanie's life has been the company. And you know what? She's actually been a women's champion and had a lot of matches, so you know what? It's hard for me not to cheer for them. I digress. Ronda, Ronda, by, Ronda by armbar. Okay, we're, we're both together on that. Okay, <laughs> Intercontinental Triple Threat. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Uh, Miz is already, like, Miz had a baby. Yep. He's going to be going off after Mania. Yep. I, to his credit, he was on Raw, and he will be at WrestleMania. Yep. That's some dedication to the business. Yeah. Hats off to you, Miz. So, that being said, he's going to need some time off after Mania. Granted. I think uh, Rollins is going to be going into a program with Roman after Mania. That's what yes. I personally think. I so, I think is. Balor is going to be the only guy left without anything to do after Mania, putting the IC belt on him would be, in my opinion, ideal for him. Gives him a direction to go that yep. he doesn't have otherwise. Originally, that was my pick, was Finn Balor, because uh, obviously we didn't know if Miz was going to have the baby yet. It was a chance that she was going to go into labor during the middle of the match, but either way, Miz is like two weeks away from being the longest person to ever hold the Intercontinental title. It'll happen eventually, probably this year. Give it some time. But, you know what I thought about it? I think uh, I think Seth Rollins is going to win this. I think they're going to put the belt on him. And it might not be on him long, but I think Seth Rollins is going to get the W here. I would like to see Balor get it because, like you said, it gives direction. I think it's going to be on Rollins, and I think you're going to have Universal Champ versus I. See champ mm. for the big so, program. This will be a difference that will give me a chance to win this glorious <laughs> championship, ladies and gentlemen. Not a chance. This is what it's all about here at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. Yeah, so far in the year, I'm ahead by four or five. You're ahead by one or two. I'll, I'll give you four that. Four or five at least. Moving on. So, the bar versus Braun and. Question mark, question mark, question mark. You know, I uh, I came up with this theory first uh, before any of you assholes on the internet started and latching onto it. We have the text to verify it. <laughs> I I like everybody's idea. Oh, Kurt Hawkins or Elias. Ask her if they can be in the Battle Royal. The only person that makes any sense Someone whatsoever. that Braun's got a lot of tag team chemistry with. You have to have chemistry. That's important. You have to trust your partner. You have to have experience in tag team competition. And nobody has more tag team experience with Braun Strowman than Alexa Bliss, the mystery partner. Has to be. It's the only way to go. And if you don't make Alexa his tag team partner, you have to make it. it's immediately going to drag down the entire it will. show. Braun can't have... A secondary. No. There's nobody that's second to Braun no. Strowman, so why not break down more of the gender barriers that WWE's been loving to do lately? I mean, China was a former Intercontinental Champion. Exactly. There you go. China. Why can't Alexa Bliss that. be one half of the Raw Tag Team Champions? I don't it would believe be great. there's any rule that says a woman can't be a part of the Tag Team uh, Champion. I've never seen, never They've heard. Never mentioned it. So though. we both have Braun Strowman. But if Alexa wins. The tag team title with Braun Strowman, does that mean that she is a dual champion? Nope, let's get into the Raw let's, Women's yeah. Title match. All right, yes, Raw Women's Title match. Um, I, I think we all know how this is going to go. Nia's going to go into a squash match, basically. I think, yeah, Nia should take this in about three to five oh, minutes. Nia needs this W bad. She needs a serious character rehabilitation. I think this should resemble China Ivory at WrestleMania. Several, it should. Alexa deserves better than that. But, she does, but, but she's perfect for this role. if this Braun idea pans out, yes. she is getting better than exactly. that. Exactly. So, but, alright, so we both got Nia. 
Yep. Um, all right. So moving on to the next women's match. Do we even? All right. Uh, on, on the count of three, we'll both say it. One, two, three. China. Asuka. Oh, sorry, Oscar. Wow. Still, still. You actually that left, battle royal. You actually left me a little speechless there for a second. All right, all right. So yeah, we're it's got to be Oscar. It's got to be Oscar. And my prediction. And I'm actually adding this as an extra win condition. <laughs> you love those. So, I'm predicting Asuka's going to defeat Charlotte for the title. Yeah. Hands held high, look at my belt, oh so wonderful. Thinking that Asuka's weakened, Carmella is going to come down, cash in her money in the bank, Asuka's going to immediately defeat her, getting a double... Yay for Asuka at WrestleMania. Double happy, double win, and you also solve the problem of you got to eventually get that money in the bank off of Carmella. Have it at WrestleMania. I think that makes the most sense, and I almost agree with it, and I think that's very likely to happen. However, my thought is that Carmella cashes in on Nia Jax and wins it. You want to make that a win condition? I will give you a point if yours right. I'll take a point if mine's right. And I don't expect mine to be right. But the reason I say mine is because they already had Baron Corbin flounder his. It would not look good to have the first woman hey, miss hey. money in the bank so, flounder hers as well because they're trying to make money in the bank a big hey. deal. And that would we'll be a call bad that look. one a chance for either of us to get some extra credit. We got our eyes on you, Carmella. Don't let us down. Come on. Like your Royal Rumble. Dang, did you have to bring that up? I thought we had promised Carmella and all no. of Carmella's fans. No, that we she needs bring that to up. know. Okay. She needs to know how bad that was. It was bad. Moving on. Okay, before we get to the main event matches, there's one thing that needs to be addressed, and that's Tony's <laughs> prediction. What, are we looking at this? Oh, wait, that's right. Yeah. We forgot one. You can't forget that. Okay. How could you God. forget this match? The this United match States falls Championship on... Rusev Day! I know. It's going to be very hard WrestleMania following on holiday. It's kind it's of rough. considered to the WWE. Is. But moving on. So we've got basically, rather than making it a fatal four way, uh, Rusev and Gender should have just. Swap places. Rusev yeah, moves up from the Battle Royal. Jinder goes back to the... And he yeah. probably should have won it last year. Oh, don't even get me started. It made no sense to have Mojo Raleigh win it when you were going to put Jinder into the title picture. Don't get me started. Anyways. Anyways. And yes, you can see how well that worked out. Jinder oh, yeah. being in the main event of WrestleMania and all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, alright. For the United States title... Go ahead. Fatal 4-Way. Randy Orton... Won the WWE title at WrestleMania last yes, year. Yes, he did. Bobby Roode, a man who is simply glorious. Damn it! <laughs> we don't speak of such things during this wonderful time of the year. Champions. And then we've got Gender Mo Oh, and then I know. <laughs> Rusev Day. Basically, by popular demand being thrown yeah, into the match. Yeah, basically. So, who do you got? I know it's not the popular opinion, and it's probably the least likely to happen, but I'm going with Jinder Mahal. You shut your dirty mouth! Can't do it. I think it's going to happen. They invested a lot into him. <laughs> I think, uh, and, oh, oh, why? Because Rusev's going to win it? In the no. business Rusev world, can barely get there's time a on phrase TV. called chasing good money after bad. Cut your losses on gender. Well, what are we going into year four straight where Roman Reigns headlines the fucking show? Oh, granted, granted. All right. So, my prediction is Rusev Day. His is gender. Yep. I think Rusev's going to take it because, hell, I mean, the boy needs it. He yeah. really needs it. Bobby I'd and, rather uh, see Bobby Rusev. Bobby and, oh, Bobby could take it too, but Bobby's got more compelling directions to go. Bobby needs to turn heel. I'll give you that. And there you go. That's his compelling direction. So, now, before we get to the two main top of the card main event matches, there's something we need to address. Tony has been predicting for several weeks now that there's going to be a Cena versus Undertaker match. And not only is this, this is more than just an extra credit, Tony is willing to make this a win condition. And Undertaker, double points. 
Yes, so, it's a potential of double points where Tony can lose a point. So, if there is an Undertaker match, Tony wins the point, he's got it. If there isn't an Undertaker match, I win the point. So, so far so good, right? Now, pick the winner. We have to pick the winner of a hypothetical match. So, should it happen? Now, I'm going to go ahead and go, f well, actually, I'll let you go, okay? <laughs> it's going to be The Undertaker. You can't soil the legacy that hard, especially two years in a row. Like, I understand why they did the Roman and Brock win. Now they're paired against each other. Cena doesn't need this rub. Cena does not need this win. Cena can go away after this. Hell, he could even come back a heel. The guy's going to be in movies. I just heard today, supposedly, he's going to be Duke Nukem. Nice. Brilliant casting, by the nice. way. Right? He doesn't need the win. He's probably not going to be on the next night on Raw. Well, maybe I'll, that, but he'll go away after I'll that. probably be in theaters for Ferdinand, too. See? <laughs> yeah. Cena's, Cena's fine. Cena can lose this match. Undertaker wins the match. When it happens... It, a, it's not going to happen. That's my prediction. If this hypothetical match were to happen, which, again, I hate being right. I'm going to hate being right, but Tony, Tony, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. The Undertaker is never going to compete in a WWE ring again. Okay? I'm sorry. Folks, there's so, a reason I have this title. If by some magical way The Undertaker gets into the ring one more time with John Cena... John Cena's going to win. And there's a very simple reason. <laughs> Undertaker is one of the most old. He's that last guy with the old school mystique. And he he's is. one of the most old school there is. Absolutely. And guess what? Undertaker's going to lose for one simple reason. John Cena is going to have another match. Undertaker won't. And that's the way you always go out when you're going out for the last time. You that's go out on your That's supposed to be true. But I think Undertaker's the exception to that given his career. Everybody thinks they are, but you can't just take and not give back. So Side I think... note, I do want to say that after the way this was booked, it's not how I would have booked it. I think that if this match is going to happen, it should happen at 35. Okay. Because this card doesn't necessarily need the star power. This is a very stacked card, but John Cena, the way you've talked up this non-match and gotten everyone involved into it, you are one of the greatest carnival barkers in all of wrestling history. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I kiss your promos yeah. three times. They were that good, were Johnny. Good. Like Any doubts I ever had about you 10 years ago, 15 years ago, poof, gone with much. your build-up to this particular pay-per-view. Beautiful. Without you even having a match. <laughs> Brilliant. You got the audience more engaged than they've been in years. So, that being said, hats off to you, Johnny. All right. Let's hit on the main events. All right. AJ Styles versus Nakamura. Champion AJ Styles, my TNA underdog, favorite wrestler in the world. World champion, two-time WWE world champion. TNA, now. you mean that uh, that tag team that was at WrestleMania 19? Test and Albert? Yeah. No, that wasn't, was it 19? Uh, it I think matter. it was. No, I don't mean Test No, no, it wasn't 19. I don't, mean, yeah. I don't mean Trip. Oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Moving on, AJ Styles, that young upstart from Japan. Yeah, that young upstart. Actually, that's uh, the reason that I kind of picked this the way I did. This is obviously for the Smarks, a dream rematch from New Japan. Shinsuke Nakamura won the last meeting. 50-50 booking would say AJ should win this. And he's the champion. He should retain, right? AJ doesn't have a lot of years left in him. Even he's admitted that. I'm glad he's ending his career where he is at the level that he is. AJ is not going to win this match. As much as I want to pick AJ Styles, and out of sheer fandom, it pains me not to pick him. I, I still kind of want to, but come on. It's oh, gonna be Shinsuke Nakamura. It's gotta be oh, Nakamura only for the reason to give AJ a better dance partner for the next six eight months. Yeah. To build Nakamura up. So yeah, I mean AJ needs like he can have a great match with anybody, but to have yeah. a spectacular well, match, WrestleMania. he's got to have a very specific kind of dance partner. And no, Nakamura is that guy. That's exactly true. Double for Nakamura it, because Nakamura hasn't had a great, great match in on the main roster. 
NXT, yes. He had a uh, pretty roster. good one with Cena up until he dropped him on his head wrong. And then everybody yeah. kind of gave him some crap for that. Yeah, that was so, ugly. Like, but I'm a big Nakamura fan. I was thrilled when he won the Royal Rumble. You can go back and listen to our review oh, of yeah. that. Uh, I would maybe go back towards the last hour for that <laughs> content. But So Nakamura, I think, this has to, to win. Be. Otherwise, I mean, seriously, just pack up and head back yeah. to Japan. They're this not going to push you. coming out party. It really does. Okay, now... <sighs> the main event. Yep. You know what? Let me just first off say, those hating on Brock Lesnar for <laughs> not being there on a weekly basis or only defending his title X amount of time, granted, like you've said, it does make the title feel more important when he does show up, but Brock Lesnar does not get enough credit because he puts in an ass load of effort every time he does show up on TV or the pay-per-view. Go back over the last year when he won a title from Goldberg at WrestleMania. Look at every title defense leading up to this point. Not one match. Nobody could point to any match that you can't point to and say, it was a car crash, hell of a lot of fun to watch. I would gladly go back and watch every one of them because we were on the edge of our seats watching each and every one because the guy is busting his ass in each and every one. Brock knows how to oh. work his ass off and he knows how to make the most amount of money per work. And he does phenomenal. He's, he's a great opponent when he wants to be. And this last year, he's wanted to be each yep. and every time. I'll get it. Like, you know, I feel sorry for you, Dean. When you're faced off against Brock, that was, that was Brock bad, at his laziest. That was bad. Buddy. Okay, he just did bad, no, that one bad. But yeah, it was, was Brock not wanting to try. It, it was, but they should have never been paired together. It was a bad booking move. Neither guy had anything to do, so that's what they put. That was a bad idea. Yeah, that I'll give you that. That's bad when you don't have anything for Brock Lesnar yeah. at WrestleMania. You got nothing for yeah. him. That's a problem. Yeah. And it's like you always hear about like, oh, sorry, we gotta let you go. The writers have nothing for you. Then fire the writers. No. Why are you firing the talent? Fire the writers if they can't figure it out. So this sorry, match is gonna was... be a <laughs> yeah, lot sorry. better than people expect it to be. Yeah, but we all know the outcome. It's, it's been in the works for this years. This has been four years in the making that the yeah, WWE want to see <laughs> Roman Reigns defeat Brock Lesnar in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania for the championship yeah. with a spear. There you go. That's the end of the match. Yeah. I just told you the last... Uh, he's going to kick out of the F5. He's going to do the Roman Reigns equivalent of hulking up. And then he's going to hit his... <laughs> and then he's going to yeah. hit the spear. Oh, sorry. That's sorry. You're doing the Paul Heyman. You don't give predictions. You give spoilers. There's your spoiler. Roman Reign wins the Universal Title at WrestleMania. I Nobody think, in their right mind would be, make otherwise. It would be awesome if Brock just oh. hit the F5. One, two, three. That's oh. Fantastic. This is the match <laughs> but, and the result uh, that they wanted at WrestleMania 31. This has been fait accompli. And unfortunately, like I've heard some people say, it's like, yeah, they better just give Roman the win. Otherwise... They're gonna do this again next year and make it like fight like yeah. and that's the thing. Roman the reason people haven't been responding to him is because he doesn't have a character arc. No. It's just kind of just a constant like yeah. they're just always he's going to win. Uh, yeah. okay, that's the character arc, and it's well, kinda of hard to get behind. That and he sucks on the mic. Uh, he's gotten better. He's gotten a lot better. Come on. Uh, he, he's getting there, I and, guess. Uh, but his in-ring work is spectacular, Chris. It's not can bad. You, can you list me five people Roman Reigns is injured in the ring? Exactly. No. That's one of the reasons why he is where he is. And because not Seth Rollins. Yeah. Ro Roman, watch out, man. Yeah. You're working with Seth for a full year. Man. Yeah, good luck with that. So Roman's stuff is crisp in the ring. And what's I'm looking actually looking forward to it is after this match... Because WWE has been so dedicated to the story arc, finally Roman Reigns can move on one direction or another yes. in something else, something different, something yeah. new. I hope they have a good, even clear, if he, like, crisp idea what they're doing with him. Loses a match, man. I, God forbid. God you know, forbid. I mean, you know, Stone Cold and The Rock got to where they were. It sure, <laughs> sure as hell wasn't undefeated. No. Yeah, that's no, it wasn't. something to keep in mind. But so. Personally, I think this WrestleMania card is going to be a great, great card. It is. It's. I'm predicting it's at least going to be a four-star card all over. 
Yeah. O- overall, uh, it's seven, easily going to be in the seventeen top five being eight. a five star card. I think it's going to be somewhere from four to four and three quarters card. If we have a couple of matches really blow it again, I think this one could could at least get up into seventeen stratosphere, if not be considered almost an equal. It'll be in the top five for sure. What would be your top three WrestleManias oh, going into this one? Seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Not necessarily in that order. That was a good stretch. Uh, yeah, I would I would say seventeen, for sure. Obviously at the top. Uh, I remember thirteen being quite good. Oh yeah, thirteen was good, but yeah. And I really personal. I like nineteen. Twenty one's also in there. Twenty one was really good. I would say seventeen, nineteen, and twenty one. What's the worst? Nine. <laughs> Personally, for me, it's nine. Technically speaking, it's got to be number two. I was about to say, if it wasn't for the main event, number one was not a great show. No, no, but it was... But, ladies and gentlemen, we hope to see you with us this Sunday for WrestleMania, where Tony G will defend the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast Championship against yours truly, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man to... Sweet to be sour, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, and soon to be <laughs> revolutionary <laughs> wrestling podcast champion. So, not if my Undertaker match has anything to say about it. Not if the lack of an Undertaker match has anything to say about it. We will have to see, and you will have to see. Join us this Sunday as we commence our review of WrestleMania.